On behalf of uh, Chairman Peters, I recognize Senator Scott. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Comfortable, uh, Dero. I think you guys do it. You and your team do an unbelievable job. Uh, I think you you are a great federal resource, and uh, I've been up here four years, and you've been unbelievably helpful in um, reviewing how government works. So I just want to thank you and your entire team for what you do. The first question is: How important is it to, that, we, that the federal government have independent inspector generals? I think it's uh, absolutely essential. And what would be some of the reasons why a, uh, a federal agency should have one, an independent inspector general? Well, there's, there's two reasons. Uh, you know, one is that they need to have an, a, an investigative function uh, in there. So many of them have criminal investigators and other things that can look at misconduct uh, with regard to the federal employees in that area or contractors or, or other areas and that uh, each agency, some of these agencies are so large that you need to have an independent audit function as well to be able to provide information. Now, they're, they're structured so that they report not only to the agency head, but also to the Congress. And that was the way that they were set up. And by and large, it's worked, uh, you know, effectively over the years. And we're at GAO, I mean, we're, you know, can't cover the entire federal government with the resources that Congress give, has given us. So we leverage the IGs uh, uh, to make sure we don't duplicate what, what they do. They arrange, for example, the annual financial audit of the agency's financial statements. We review the work. It's usually done by an IPA. And then uh, we can use that to rely on to make the, our report on the government-wide financial statements. So the, the Federal Reserve has nearly a $9 trillion balance sheet. I don't think there's any federal agency that has probably a $9 trillion balance sheet other than the Federal Reserve. And they don't have an inspect, in, independent inspector general. So do you think it would be appropriate for them to, to be like, what is it, over 30 federal agencies have independent inspector generals? Would that make sense? Uh, yes, I think that makes sense. When I first became acting Comptroller General, I, asked, I actually came to the Congress and asked for a statutory inspector general at GAO. So we, we have one there, and I think it's important uh, that the statutory IGs have certain protections uh, and notification requirements, et cetera, and I, I think so. There, there is one agency that has a, a balance sheet higher than that. Unfortunately, it's the Bureau of Public Debt. So, but, uh, but in any event, that's it's just a side issue. Um, so I, you've, um, you've written a lot about this, but um, I watched when I was governor um, of Florida, we had the hurricanes, and I watched how much fraud and abuse there was with regard to a variety of things that FEMA had contract, would contract for or the Corps of Engineers. And one of the, uh, the biggest is debris cleanup. And um, it's frustrating because you just see the, this significant amount of, of waste. And so do you, uh, I've had a bill that would require, as an example, uh, any entity that's going to, you know, do debris is going to pay for, like counties and cities have a pre-landfall uh, contract and then enforce it. Uh, and then we have way more review uh, because, as you know, as, as I think you, you all have written, uh, FEMA cut back on even some, a lot of their review of uh, when they pay. So. Do you think we ought to have, uh, I mean, it's a lot of money. I think, I think with Irma, I mean, it was, it was over a billion dollars just to debris cleanup. So do you think they ought to have some way to start, stop all this fraud? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think that, you know, debris removal is not only expensive, but it's the critical path to recovery. It's the first thing that needs to be done. And I think because of that, there's a lot of, of, of people who take advantage of that situation because of the urgency and the dilemma facing people. And that whenever we've seen emergencies, you saw that with the pandemic, it brings out best in human nature, but it brings out a lot of the fraudsters in, that area, in those areas. And disaster relief is no uh, uh, exception to that. And so I, th I think the bill that you're, you and Senator Peters are working on is, is, a, is a good uh, step uh, forward to help focus on that issue and put more attention on it, as was the Advanced Contracting Act that, that this committee passed in 2020, but the, the proposed legislation builds further on that. Right. Another issue that came up while I was governor is uh, national flood insurance. We've been at three plus donor states since national flood insurance uh, came in. 
what I watched while I was governor is there's an unbelievable increase in certain areas of rates. And so you'd think if you were a donor state of any amount, but especially triple uh, uh, donor state, you wouldn't think you would see that. How important is it for FEMA and the federal government to do everything they can to help build a private flood insurance program uh, to reduce the risk of the national flood insurance program? I, I think it's, it's very important that that program be reformed. It's been on our high risk list as a separate program since uh, 2006 or seven, you know, following Katrina and, and Rita. Uh, right now there's a over $20 billion debt that the program owes to Treasury, and that's after the federal government has forgiven $16 billion in debt that was owed before. Uh, it's not actuarially sound. Uh, and so there's, and as a result, you have a lot of inequities uh, in the program that's hard to keep up to date. Uh, so trying to have a private market for it, uh, the question is whether or not, you know, that can be structured in a way that would be attractive to insurers because they're going to charge actuarially sound rates or they're not going to insure. And uh, so the, the federal government could, could provide more affordability assistance to help people with the rates as opposed to running the program itself. Uh, and so I, I think that that should be given serious consideration. Thank you. Thanks. First off, I just would tell you what the reports you guys put out are unbelievable. You guys do an unbelievable job. Your whole team does. So thank you for what you do. Thank you, Senator.